Hello everyone, this is Edgy once again with uh, uh, another tutorial. Uh, this is actually the second part of the DNA tutorial. In the first part, <coughs> we learned how to uh, design this model, this DNA model with just scripting. And in the second part, we want to learn how to convert all these uh, spheres and um, to particles and to play with them. Okay. And before we begin, uh, what I forgot uh, from the uh, from the uh, last tutorial was the letter in the between. Uh, I'll hide by name. This is something that I forgot to create. It's simply uh, I have here a cylinder and then copied it and I attached them all together and after that I made a twist so it matches to our DNA uh, and at the last I made a noise so <clears throat> so will be our DNA okay so right now <clears throat> what we want to do is to create particles instead of these objects okay for this reason uh, I go here and uh, create a particle system PF source. Okay, this will be our. Uh, I press six to open here. This will be our leather uh, um, particles. So frame frame but it's important to say 100% and uh, for the beard we want to say uh, uh, start and emit at zero and for now let it be 4000 and position instead of position we want to have uh, a position object And this position object will be my ladder. You see, uh, right now I have the particles here on the ladder. And <clears throat> the next step is a uh, shape instance instead of shape. Um, I have here shape instance. I bring it here. And here for the shape instance, we choose the also the red one for for the ladder in the between. And we don't want to have any rotation. And the display should be uh, geometry. Okay, that's until now. So uh, <clears throat> I also give a scale. To it scale scale and I put I put right now for example 10 I will change it after that I can hide my ladder so I can see this uh, particle better right now and uh, I create also a wind let me create mm -hmm, a wind I have also create, created two winds before. That's okay. One of them is uh, wind one and wind two. Okay, that's okay. The first wind one we have the tur turbulence of 1.871, frequency two, and scale 0 0.04. And the uh, the Mm, the second one we have turbulence of 10, frequency of 2, and scale of 0 0.05. So, here uh, what we want to do is to apply the, uh, the force. And by this, we have also a drag, we, we, we select the wind wind one uh, and also the drag 
and when I scroll up the timeline you can see that they are right now going away okay and I say by the age test the age test of uh, bring this here just, but the age test of uh, 80 with variation of 5 we should go uh, to the next event the next event is the next event we, we should have an, a scale mm -hmm. and this scale in this scale we have uh, uh, I will have this as absolute scale and then the first frame we want to have scale uh, of 2 in the frame 60 we want to have uh, the scale of 5 and in the frame 40 we want to have the scale of uh, 40 so okay and I go back I connect this here to the here the goal is this at the face that they are in the um, in their origin position I don't want to see them so I go back to the scale and make it to zero so I cannot see the um, the particles here but they af after a certain of uh, age when they come to the next event then I will them to uh, appear okay and they will appear from small and they will they are going they are growing so is it okay that is what I want right now and I also want to have um, a force here mm. and in this force I want to have also my wind one okay but uh, the influence I want to key the influence at the frame zero it's tall it, it's thousand but at frame 80 I want I want them to be in their uh, origin position so I don't want to have any wind anymore so I, I make it zero from from uh, zero uh, from thousand to zero okay at frame 80 and uh, also I turn this off and I also give a lock bond okay uh, lock bond and here in this in, in, in the lock bond what we want to have is our the ladder Oh, I, I hide it. Happen, yeah? So select ladder, and at frame I want to have to look to surface and restrict the surface. Uh, and at uh, at frame zero I want to have the value of uh, ninety six. And at frame uh, 15, frame 15 or 18, no matter, I want to have uh, the force of 99. So, okay, I increase the amount to <coughs> 40,000 and the result will be this that uh, the particles will uh, generate it uh, on the ladder but uh, after after the, the wind and draw them uh, away uh, with the influence of thousand and with the age of 15 in the next even the lock point uh, try to bring them back uh, to the original position so this is this will be the first part of our uh, particle
I turn this off and I bring back back my my red ones and also my uh, leather. No, not my leather, my base. Okay. The second part is to generate uh, the red particles. Uh, for this reason, <coughs> we want to create another standard flow. And in this standard flow, uh, all we want to have is um, to say that in the bird, go here and here we have 100%. Okay. In this um, start and um, uh, stop emit, we want to have 0, 0, just one particle. Okay. And uh, instead of position, we delete the position, delete the speed, delete the rotation, and delete also the shape. And in the display, we want to have them as geometry. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, we create here a data operator. Mm -hmm. A data operator. In this a data operator, I open this data operator and I make a select object and in this select object instead of single I say multiply and I select all my red particles okay so right now I have all my red selected and I have them all here so I go here and um, in the object I use a uh, number of objects and amount change I want to have I want them to spawn that amount of particle it means it will be uh, <coughs> for each single uh, sphere that we have here we have right now a particle here so at the same time, what I want to do, at one, I want the particles to be positioned in this, uh, where the spheres are. So for this, mm -hmm, I, I go back at the frame zero. I bring the object here once again. And here, I say object transform. But normally, you see object transform will just give me the uh, transform of a single object but I want to have each particle individual so what I want to do is here designate this object I click here and if I bring another input instance and ID bit index so each uh, each one uh, will uh, will have another position right now. The particle one will have the position of sphere one. The particle two will have the position of sphere two, and so on. And here, uh, what we want to have, we want to have an uh, output standard here. Yeah? Output standard. And this output standard, we want to uh, have this as script because we want to use this uh, for fine tar target. For the fine target, we should give this uh, a vector. We should use a vector script. But we have here uh, actually, uh, oh sorry, I, I changed this one. This is particle ID, and this is little here. And this here is script vector and transform of matrix to vector we have an inverter here so but we we want also uh, uh, <coughs> collect the uh, initial position of all these uh, objects so we create another uh, <coughs> output new and this output new will be a matrix a global matrix and we rename this and we say origin transform okay and we select this here 
but I want them to I want right now you see first bar script and origin but I want them all to um, happen just in the first frame so I bring another input standard here say new in event and make it a filter here here and here so right now if I red one hide this right now I have all my particles okay but <clears throat> the next uh, step is to give a force because I don't want to be I want want to them to stay here in the origin position so I give a force drag and the wind one and um, also scale because at the beginning I want them to be all relative first zero okay and finally a H test okay one zero so when they are burned when they are burning uh, they will um, the particle will be generated all the particles and they will in the um, position initial position and uh, will be stored and they will um, pass to the next event but in the next event actually what we want to do is uh, before do we we need an emitter okay right now we need a emitter so i come here and uh, and the um, I create a plane, a simple plane, <coughs> and 50, Okay, somehow in the middle, and I named this a meter one, a meter one, and I make a copy. To the other side and make it emitter too okay no problem so this will be my emitter so i go back and press six and in the next event what i want to do is uh, give the particle a position because right now until now they have no position position object and add my list emitter one so they will be all here right now and once again I, I copy this uh, force one copy. and uh, I have a copy and um, okay I say age test between uh, mm, I make an age test When they are somewhere between uh, between 60 with variation of 10, they should go to the next event. But right now, but right now the scale are, is, is zero. See, right now the scale are zero. So, mm, what? Well, you see these are the particles right now and uh, for the scale I want them to grow up and uh, until until a certain of amount of scale so for this I create a data operator I create a data operator and I rename this uh, data operator and uh, scale okay a data operator that do the scale stuff very easily and the scale will be like this i bring an import standard and go to the scale average or minimum and i also create a function and this function 
we'll calculate the real time and I bring also scalar and this color will be 0 0.01 so the current value the current value current scale value will get a uh, plus um, 0 0.01 and uh, the out we will pass this to our output output standard and we will pa pass this here to scale average scale so it's an real but we just bring an pipe and we say uh, I bring in another scholar here make it 0 0.3 okay and I come here and I change this here to uh, float and make this value to 0 0.3 add okay R2 right now I say R2 if R1 is so this is our R1 okay R2 will be it will be the same uh, value here if it's less or equal to uh, 3.2 not 3.2 remove all okay R2 if R1 is less or equal to th uh, 0.3 and R3 will be this if it's more than this so each frame that it comes here it gets uh, the scale get higher and higher until it's reached the amount of 0.3 from that moment the scale will stay on 0.3 that's the way that we create it okay so right now we are here and uh, after a certain amount of age we want to pass this to the next event so they are growing up and there um, first the information will be collected on their first position and they they will born and uh, they will uh, uh, born from the emitter one which is here with some force and some scale and after 60 uh, frame they will go to the next event in the next event what we want to do is uh, to say uh, find target and here <coughs> I select this and in the find target we will say we want to have this uh, by script vector so you see they are uh -huh, they are trying to come to to the origin original positions but uh, right now you see they are going away because of the speed that it, it's there so what I want to do right now here uh, I create here uh, a, a force wind mm. and I give the second wind or the the second wind and at frame zero the influence is of course 1000 at frame 30 it will be stay 1000 but at frame for example 60 here or more here I want I want them to, ha to be zero so mm -hmm. So they are trying to come uh, to the to its original position. Okay, they are uh, looking like ticks because there is no uh, there is no shape. So here we can also give um, a data operator. Data operator here and. shape control and I go here and I select my shapes okay I don't know what they are mm, the red ones okay okay 
the red strand we have right now the red strand here and I hope right now that everything is okay mm-hmm I have this here and I rename this to data operator shape and I also copy this to here and also here so uh -huh. I hope that right now it's working yeah but when it came to here there is still a problem uh, data operator shape uh, because here is ticks okay so they are coming they are changing and they are trying to go to their original positions we will also have to scale we bring also the scale but this time we want to uh, have them in this frame not 0.3 but 0.6 so I will go here to remove all and bring this to 0.62 okay I save this what we have until now so until now we uh, created the particle and we say the particle that they should go and uh, find their target but when they are coming to the target they are passing through so we we should tell the particle that when they are in the particle uh, places you should stay there so uh, for this reason we should pass them to the next event First, uh, I copy this shape and uh, scale and make a copy in a new event. And here in the in the last event, I want uh, the scale to reach the original size, which is one. And here in the pipe, we should say one. Okay. And uh, here I'll create a lock bond. And by list to my base so they should find their position on yeah on the on the base okay but at first what I want to have is I want to have the force 90 and for example at frame 80 at frame 80 I want to have it to 100 so 100 here okay so the result will be this it will it will come and stick here okay so they will come and stick and when they will uh, come to their origin position because I teach this in another tutorial of mine the position is not exactly the same but we have a little a little just uh, a little bit offset in the position and so therefore uh, here after the lock bond we pass them or we can create also an edge test which is which say uh, 66 with variation of 12 go to the last event and the last event is just a data operator mm, where is data operator I create make this instead of tick geometry and we will pass this to the data operator and this updated and here we want to have uh, our uh, output custom uh, input custom input custom and origin matrix we pass this to our output standard so 
transform matrix that is it so the position that we saved here here in the first uh, frame we pass it back here in the last frame so and we can also make a, a material dynamic or static is up to you in the first one and for example these are the red ones okay make an instance so what we have here they are growing up from here and after a certain amount of time they are coming and forming its uh, uh, original position okay so that's until now so from now the, you can repeat the same process for the for the white ones I don't want to bother you with uh, uh, to repeat all the stuff with the white one so I go uh, I jump to to my scene that I created because uh, I have to explain some some stuff here uh, first press 6 here you can see this is for the ladder and this is for the uh, red ones and this is for the white ones I turned off this because this is a bit, little bit heavy for my computer and if you see here uh, my camera is like this I can turn off the, my lights and you can see how it is so the, the last thing that I, I should tell you is this because uh, in the movie it's like this that this is rotating but actually because all these are particles I couldn't rotate rotate them uh, <coughs> so the way that I wanted so what I did instead of this I created the uh, pointer a point a dummy and I linked this to my camera and I rotated the point the dummy so the camera is rotating around my object with all the lights everything it so it's looking like uh, the camera is in the same position and these are rotating but that's not the truth that's it that's another trick that I created um, and I first the camera is like this look from the bottom and it's come down and goes back so that is it and the another thing that I did also was this the first uh, the particles are like this and you see the particles and after a certain amount of time they are come <coughs> coming to their original uh, shape as you can see this is a this is actually two sphere with one cylinder and in time we have an animation here so I I pass this as my instance object so that is why you see the result like this that the particles are like this in the first frames and at after a certain amount of time uh, they are as like it's absorbing so but the main point if you ask me in this tutorial is how to have a lot of objects and to create that amount of particle and say that each particle uh, represent one of these objects and uh, the basic the heart of this tutorial, if you ask me, is just this here. For transform, for object transform, these ticks as uh, designate its object and give your birth index as uh, designated a particle. So this this was the tutorial about. Of course, I just uh, teach you the um, basic idea and how how you can work with this in uh, 3d studio max with uh, uh, with particle flow and data operator of course the final result that you saw the, there are a lot of compositing and other stuff and motion blur smart motion blur and other stuff like this 
Mm, this tutorial is just for uh, mm, to understand how the workflow of data operator and uh, understanding the, the the idea, the basics. Uh, if you have question of other uh, from other part of my animation, I mean the compositing other stuff, you can feel free to ask, no problem. Okay. So this was the tutorial about. I hope you enjoyed it and you learned something. And uh, if you like it, don't forget to subscribe me. Okay. See you later, guys. Bye.